Like it or not, bats are valuable to our ecosystem. But now a new disease is threatening to make them extinct. And this disease has finally reached Canada. Our Paul Johnson with that story tonight. I started monitoring bat populations in relatively about 1990. Biologist Dan Feller has been exploring the lush forests of western Maryland since he was a kid. But a recent trip inside a cave he's visited for years shocked and saddened him. As soon as we walked in, I noticed these big clusters of bats, and I could still see daylight at the entrance. Here, bats had been dying here at the entrance, and the bodies had been scavenged by probably raccoons and other animals and all that was left were the little bones of the wings. It's called a hibernaculum, a cave where bats hibernate in the winter. But something had happened to the bats here over the last winter that killed 75 percent of them. Next year I expect there to be very few bats left in that in that locality. <laughs> And Feller's worst fear was soon confirmed, that a new and fast-spreading disease had devastated that hibernaculum, white nose syndrome, a fungus that scientists think wakes the bats up during hibernation, ultimately killing them. And they're burning up their energy, and they're, they're starting to starve to death. First seen in a cave in upstate New York in 2006, the disease has spread like wildfire, moving south, west, and north, with the first cases of it showing up in Canada in bat caves in Quebec and Ontario this spring. At this pace, biologists are now concerned it could make it to the southwest United States within a few years, home to some of the continent's biggest bat populations. The outcome, unknown. So how is it spreading? Scientists aren't exactly sure, but they think it might be spreading bat to bat, since bats can fly hundreds of kilometers from their home caves. But they also think it may be spread by people as well, by cave explorers. And for that reason, they've closed off a lot of caves to the public. One thing they do know for certain, this is the fastest spreading disease they've seen since the West Nile virus. It's a heartbreaking situation for biologists and people like Leslie Sturgis, who rehabilitates injured and orphaned bats in Virginia. Bats are just such an amazing part of nature. Bats are primarily insect predators, and they're nocturnal. They have to be able to catch insects at night. The mythology of bats in popular culture has given them a bad reputation, she says. Healthy bats in North America don't bite people, and as the world's only flying mammals, they have the unique ability to navigate at night by echolocation. I think it has to do with the fact they're nocturnal and we're not. They look bigger than they are when they're flying. Smiley! Hey babes, what you doing? Sturgis hand feeds her bats mealworms and insect larvae. They can be voracious eaters, consuming their entire weight in insects in a single night. Once she's got them healthy enough, she'll bring them to this enclosure to practice flying. Their chaotic looking flight that's actually very precise and guided by echolocation. Sturgis is not optimistic about the future of North American bats because of white nose syndrome. When you start getting something like this that's taking out huge percentages of the population very quickly, they may not be able to recover from this. There may not be enough left. And beyond the intrinsic value of the species itself, the loss of bats from white nose syndrome could have profound ecological consequences. Well, number one, pretty much every bug that a bat eats, eats something that we value. <laughs> so the insects that bats are preying on are things uh, that eat our food crops, that eat our forest foliage, that eat our gardens. I can just imagine that we are going to start seeing much heavier damage to our fragile forest ecosystems because of the bats being missing from the equation. And there's the nuisance factor. Consider that the presence of bats in any region removes literally tons of insects from the ecosystem, including mosquitoes. With the disease already confirmed in Ontario and Quebec, evenings in cottage country could be even more buggy.
I don't think we can really even begin to guess at what the ramifications of this are going to be if we lose a substantial part of our bat population. We don't really know how this is going to impact, you know, a lot of things like, you know, spread of West Nile virus, encephalitis, all these um, diseases that are carried, say, by mosquitoes. For Feller and Sturgis, though, it's not just a situation with the bats that worries them. Are they a canary in a coal mine, an indicator of larger forces at work, possibly climate change or habitat destruction, that can introduce a never-seen-before disease with devastating effect? Biologists are fearing the worst because of what we've seen, the, the degree of mortality this is causing is the degree of mortality that's associated with extinction events. So we're looking at species that were once fairly common now could become extinct rapidly.